everybody, Wayne Davies here from Spectra Economics and today I'm going back to market structure and sadly this is going to be the last video in this series. This also brings the whole market structure series to an end as well because I started this series in written posts which you'll find um, in the description here and also you'll find it on my uh, Steam it page so you go there, you click on the link so you can go and read those posts and this is also as in the final video of the video series. So it was a series of seven videos, uh, one introduction video, and then we got six videos that go into a little bit of detail on various market structures. So we started off with uh, perfect competition, and we went to monopolistic competition, all by oligopoly, all by monopoly, and most recently was monopsony. And monopsony is quite relevant, I think, to today's. Uh, uh, video on oligopsony. So a lot of the theory is very very similar. So um, this is not going to be really a theoretical uh, video. I'm not going to be into economic theory. You want to know more about that you can read the post or you can go back to the previous video. That previous video link has been included here as well for you guys to go back on that. But for oligopsony it's going to have a little bit of a different focus. It's going to be looking at in terms of steam. Interesting. So how does that fit in and how does that work? As you can see, um, I, I posed a question here, is, oh, sorry, oligopsony, is it relevant to Steam? And in what way? All right, um, so what is it now? We are now in, about to start September, aren't we? Right at the end of August. Actually, depending on what date I've actually posted this, but you know, somewhere around there. At the beginning of the year, things were looking pretty bullish for Steam. Things were looking great, things were moving wonderful, and. I think everyone was feeling very happy. So since then, things have been a little bit of a down. Um, not to worry too much. It's been the entire cryptocurrency market has been on a bit of a down, which is can be good in some ways because that weeds out some of the weaker cryptocurrencies and the stronger ones can flourish and survive. At the moment, we're sort of barely surviving, but there's a lot of opportunity going forward anyway. So, you know, that's just give things a little bit of a positive note here for you guys, you know, thinking going forward, I think there's plenty of opportunities here. And if you look at some other Steam posts, and that's why I took so long coming out with my last written post on Oligopsony is because I was doing a lot of work in regards to Steam and exploring that in terms of economics. So, um, this, so this, yeah, so it's a lot of research and somehow sort of accumulated into this uh, final video slash final post of the series. So. Anyway, so let's now go to Steam and see how Oligopsony applies to Steam. Oh, more, more or less, I should say, in terms of the content creators on Steam anyway. Okay, so let's just give you a quick uh, recap of what I mean by uh, Monopsony. I think you need to understand that first. Like I said, I got links to that. So Monopsony was just one buyer and many sellers. So we have Steam. That's clearly not the case of Monopsony. And you're probably thinking, could it possibly be oligopsony either? You wouldn't think so immediately, would you? Because anyone who goes on to see, essentially, is a seller. You're creating your content and then you're trying to get upvotes. Getting the upvotes is like kind of like your selling price and what people are paying you, more or less. And that's your rewards. It looks a little bit like that. And then anyone who's upvoting, which is literally anyone on Steam, we've got one million people, so they would be your customers, they'd be your buyers. So that looks nothing like oligopsony, you'd think, right? Well, not quite. And that is simply because a lot of the wealth and the concentration of power within Steam actually lies with just a few accounts. And I think we're talking about about a thousand accounts really that have real significant power. And I think with whales, we're looking at under 40 whale accounts. And those whale accounts, I think for accounts for like 80 to like 90 percent, was it? Um, I think that was the case. So I think it's dropped down to like about 70 percent now of the. Um, of the, um, what you call it, the um, steam power, the stake in steam itself. And because voting is stake based, those who have a higher stake have more control over where the rewards go. So you could get two well upvotes, 100% well upvotes, and you would be doing better than someone who got, let's say, 20,000 um, plankton upvotes. That's why plankton was the, let's say, the lowest. Because we got ranking in steam, we got plankton, I think we got red fish. And then we got minnow, dolphin, orca, not many of those. Whales, like I said, less than 40 whale accounts. Now some of the whales have spread their wealth over several accounts, so that makes it interesting as well. So you may have had previously one whale account, now they may be, in fact, 
let's say five or six orca accounts and maybe a dolphin account or something like that so it's just the way they want to distribute their wealth but more or less it's it's a similar sort of thing that a lot of uh, wealth is in the hands of the few so their upvotes are worth a lot and if you look at the um, the table I'm not sure how this is being presented in my video but anyway you can see here we have a lot of people a lot of our top content creators that are getting a very very high percentage of their rewards from just their top five followers should we call them top five upvoters and and some of them are shocking me like 80 90 percent and these are our top content creators you imagine if we didn't have those people with that say you know you're doing great you know you're getting 80 percent of your rewards from let's say just three people and it's like yeah i'm earning a lot of money what if those three people leave and just go and that could be troublesome that could be it's a real risk for a content creator that if you rely heavily on just a few people if they leave or or simply just change their mind and decide to upvote other people and normally in oligopsy there's a little bit more security around that so let's take for example oh publishers for example someone writes a book maybe one book every couple of years or whatever so you're not constantly producing content so the fact that you have very few buyers of that the publishers is not such a big deal you just get the big deal and come away but content creators on steam need a reliable source of income if they're going to stay here and relying on just a few people for those rewards is actually very risky so it's as you can understand from that point of view, that's something that is a little concerning. All right, so how do you get these big upvotes? I think a lot of you are talking about. And you just go back to market structures. What have I mentioned in the past? You can compete by price, or you can compete by quality or quantity. Quantity, should you would say, sorry. Quality, yes, quality. So you compete with quality and with price. So how do you compete with price? Isn't upvote fixed? Well, not exactly, and I think that's where things have got a little bit complicated now, but the price side of it, you can kind of offer someone like a discount on what they're paying you. If you get what I mean, this seems rather bizarre. Are they paying you? Well, it's not directly paying you, and there's probably need to understand how the rewards pool works a slightly better. So what happens is, is we have Steam, and every day the supply of Steam is increasing and 75% of that supply goes into what we call the rewards pool. So by increasing the supply of Steam, you're actually diluting the stake of the existing stakeholders. So it's effectively, it's almost like a compulsory payment that has to be made. So if you own stake in Steam, you effectively, you are paying people for what they're offering to you. So that, that is fixed, you're definitely paying. But how you pay and who you pay, that is a little bit up for grabs. Like for example, you could purely self-vote. So effectively, whatever Steam is being created, you just bring it straight back to yourself. And effectively, that is one way of doing it. It's certainly frowned upon by the community and you could actually be countered by downvotes. So you could be far worse off by doing that. Another thing is actually selling votes. And that was something that was initially frowned upon. But now we have this whole bid bot industry. So what people do is they delegate their Steam power to the bid bots and then people then bid for votes. So effectively, you are paying to get an upvote. But it's not quite that simple because it looks like you're buying votes, but effectively, you are kind of giving a discount on the content that you're selling. Because the, um, and that sounds rather strange, but the fact of the matter is these rewards are being distributed to you. And from someone's stake, effectively, their stake is being diluted, so they're choosing where that goes. So by actually getting a payment for that, it's like you're saying you're giving them a discount on, in terms of how much they have to give away. So their stake's been diluted, but some of their stake is kind of returned to them by more steam going back to them, and you get the rewards as well. And that is, again, that operates through a market in itself. The higher you bid, the higher you're going to get in terms of upvotes, or higher value upvote, and that's how the bid bot works. So if you're the only bidder, then you get the entire upvote. Yeah, though there are a few stipulations being thrown in now by the big bots in terms of what they call returns on investment and that sort of stuff. It can get confusing, but that's one way of competing, you'd say, through price. Another way is through content, uh, quality of content or popularity of content. You produce content that is very popular, that is really high quality and is going to bring people to Steam. 
uh, you may get some very high up votes from some of the whales. They'll see this and say, wow, this is really good stuff. People are going to read your stuff and they're going to want to come and invest in Steam. They're going to want to come and be a content creator on Steam as well. They'll want to read the content and they want to curate and blah, 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 blah. So that is another way of selling yourself by producing very good content or content is going to be very popular and adds value to the platform. If it adds value to the platform, that's going to encourage investors. And the more people invest in Steam, the price of Steam is going to go up. So what happens here is, so your stake may be reduced, for example, but does that matter if the price of Steam is going up? So what if you, you know, previously had 40% of Steam, let's say, and now you only have 35% of Steam. But instead, the price of Steam is going up, and that is basically those that have the most invested in Steam are most interested in, is the price, and what is going to bring investors into Steam to increase that price. So now we have a situation of, okay, so if you compete in terms of price, Oh, sorry, price of your post. Uh, that may not be such good quality content. So that may not have such a price effect in terms of the price of Steam. So you've got different types of price here. I'll get you confused on that one. So there's the price of Steam and then there's the price of your content. The price of your content, in a sense, is what they are paying in terms of the upvote. Even though that, like I said, the upvotes is a dilution of stakes. So it's like a compulsory payment. Just that we get to use our stake to decide where that goes. Hopefully that's making a little bit of sense. It is a little bit confusing. It's probably easier to read it in the text, but if you have any questions, you can ask me. That, that's all cool. All right. Um, <laughs> what's I got here? I got a funny drawing here. What's this all about? Uh, voting for a while. No, it's time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so this is what I'm talking about in terms of risk. I think I mentioned that before, so I think I got a little bit ahead of myself. So if relying on just one or two I, you know, whale upvotes to keep you going, they can just leave and then you, you're gonna be left in the dark. You, so what you can do to reduce this risk is by, you know, getting to know the whales, get to talk to them, get to know some of the other big investors. Doesn't be whales, could be orcas, could be even dolphins. Even go there and comment on their posts, let them know. Like for example, you know, let's say a few dolphins are doing a few posts on certain topics, and it's like, oh, that's of interest to you. You're writing on similar things or making videos on similar things. You can make educated comments and think, well, this guy knows what he's talking about. And they might be more tempted to go and have a look at your posts and then give you up votes in turn. So effectively, you want to try and get as many uh, upvotes as you can. So a bit of a diversity. So, you know, instead of relying on maybe just five what did I say, two or three very large upvotes, maybe you could get 10, 15 medium-sized upvotes. If a few of them drop off, it's not a big deal. That will reduce your risk. Understand that's going to be difficult because, like I said, not many people own an awful lot of Steam power. I think about 99% of people on Steam are minnows or less. So you're looking at upvotes that are worth like one or two cents, maybe even less than that. So it's, it's difficult, you get thousands of these votes, it's, it's not a big deal. So you kind of need to grab the attention of those that have more votes. And like I said, you can go and make comments on their posts, especially people within the same interests, and get their attention that way. So anyway, um, so this is a problem in a sense. I feel it's a problem that if you have to rely on just a few upvotes to get where you're going. And it's not something that's going to be sold overnight. Like I said, you can make the effort to get more upvotes from different people, but there's a limit to that. And like I said, there's thousands of, sorry, there's a million accounts now, and there's thousands of posts going up every single day. So, and there's also as well, you've got to be realistic in regards to the whales' times too. So, how do they use their time? Like if they gave everybody 1% upvotes, then you're looking at what an average of 10 full upvotes a day, that is like a thousand upvotes a day. It's a little bit unreasonable. So for them to function, if they haven't delegated their Steam elsewhere, they're gonna give bigger upvotes to just a few people simply because curating takes a lot of time. A way around that though could be delegating the Steam power to people you consider as reliable curators, people that know how to find good content. And you know, one way I could find maybe like 10 to 20 really good quality curators and they could go out essentially do the work for them. Give them a cut in the curation rewards and I think that would be a very good way to grow the platform. Another thing is time. Over time, and I've got in a graph here, not a graph, sorry, a table, that concentration of wealth is going to fall. As over time, more and more people 
invest in Steam, some of the whales are going to start to sell some of their Steam and move on to other projects. Because there's a lot of wealth tied up in Steam. They could be doing other things with that and they don't want to hold it forever. Once it gets to a good price, they may very well move on. And there'll be other people coming in that are interested too. I'd like to see, you know, some more of the middle class people coming in, maybe investing like just a couple of thousand here or there. You'd be surprised. You just get like, you know, 20, 30,000 people investing a few thousand dollars. It could make a real difference in terms of how the wealth distributed it and also how the platform functions as a whole. But all of this, I see some, that is going to be something that's going to happen in time. I think having the bid bots is kind of slowing that down a little bit because the wealth is being returned back to the whales again in terms of the boats paid rather than being distributed to content creators. But we'll see how that goes and we'll come back in a year's time and see what's happening. Oh well, so that's um, my perspective of oligopsony in the context of Steam. And did I define, I think I briefly defined what oligopsony is, that's just a few buyers instead of our monopsony. And a lot of the other characteristics are the same, so I'm not gonna go into all of that detail. So is Steam an oligopsony? It kind of looks like it, but it's not an oligopsy for everyone, I don't think. I think some people are going to be locked into that oligopsy for their own content, but others won't be. Other people will be able to find more people to, you know, how to say, upvote their content rather than just rely on the same users. So there's a bit of initiative going forward there. All right, so now I am officially at the end of my video series and the overall series on market structure. So all up, I think I've got 14 posts, seven videos, and seven written posts. And I've also got many other Steam posts as well. It kind of leads up to this a little bit as well. So there's a lot of posts. So I've got the links to the written posts here, and I've got the link to the most recent video on Monopsony for you guys to take a look at. And I must admit, it's been quite a bit of fun doing these videos. Um, I'll be moving on to other stuff. There's a lot of stuff I still need to cover off on. Um, I still got to get back to what I call vegan economics. Now I'm calling it um, cruelty-free economics. I haven't touched that in a very long time. So expect to see some posts on that. Um, yeah, and of course, I'll be doing more economic theories going forward as well. And there's the Dark Side series I haven't touched in a while either. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, you can look into my account. I have what I call a few library posts, even those are getting a bit old now, a few months back, which contains a long list of all the posts that I've done before. So good for you to take a look at that. So if you like my content, or oh, in particular you like this video, give me a like, give me a follow, sorry, give me an upvote, give me a follow, give me a re-steam. If you're looking at this on, I think maybe YouTube, then I think it's a like and a subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and you will definitely be seeing a lot more of me in the future. Assuming that is you actually, you know, tap on my video and watch what I'm doing. Okay, thank you. See ya.